Coles. So tell us a bit, a uh, bit more about your background. Uh, so look, I come from a sort of a little bit of a wagering and tech background. I, um, in a previous life, used to play poker, um, and then I've spent a bit of time in the bookmaking industry, and also had a little bit of time in tech development as well. So I've got a few sort of previous paths that I used to uh, hover around, should I say? And um, yeah, I guess it's just natural as a, a sport lover and someone that likes data and punting and all those sorts of things that you naturally find yourself getting involved in DFS. Um, I'm guessing very similar to a lot of people that not only use daily fantasy rankings, but also play any kind of fantasy sport is that we all sort of started playing free to play stuff like Supercoach or Dream Team or things like that. And then eventually you um, get sick of spending time um, doing research and numbers and stuff like that with no reward. So you naturally move into either wagering or DFS. Right. Okay. And that's actually where, where I was going to get started. So a lot of us, you know, got either play NRL fantasy or on NRL super coach or, or the AFL or cricket equivalents of that. Um, can you give us a, a really basic rundown of, of how daily fantasy is different and, and it's just a bit about how popular it is globally as well? Sure. So daily fantasy sports allows you to really immerse yourself in a particular game. And the big difference between a season long event where you may pick your team and then do a couple of trades each week, daily fantasy sports is very much structured to a specific single game or a single slate. And a slate may be for on a Saturday for AFL, there might be four or five games. And those um, selections that you make for your team are based on that slate or those games. So you've got to pick from a player pool of the people playing in that day. Um, you then pay a little bit of an entry fee, you know, at all different levels, it might be a dollar, it might be $50, it might be whatever it is, whatever sort of suits your bankroll. And then you're able to just pick your team, score points for that day, and then a prize is awarded at the end of that day. So there's no season long commitment. There's no things where you might be busy one weekend, and can't do trades. You can play as little or as much as you would like in a whole range of sports. Excellent. All right. And um, we've, uh, I guess in Australia, had daily fantasy for, was it about 2016 when it, when it came here? Yeah, probably 2015. I think Moneyball were one of the first. There was also a site, Top Better as well, um, that used to do fantasy horse racing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about five years that it's been around sort of mainstream. Cool. And can you give us a picture of, I guess, the global landscape? Because uh, I know American sports do this in, in a whole, uh, I guess, uh, a much bigger picture. Yeah, sure. So obviously the US DFS market is huge. Um, whereas we're very fortunate in Australia that we've been able to, you know, sports betting and horse racing is really part of our culture. And you've been able to walk into a tab and place a bet, you know, for my whole life. Whereas over in the US, the only way you could get a bet down was either going to a bookie that you knew or a casino, perhaps in Las Vegas or one of the main spots. So DFS was incredibly popular for people that not only wanted to do season long, as we touched on before, but also paid contests. So you've got some of the big players over in America, such as DraftKings and FanDuel, which have ridiculous pool sizes and you know hundreds and thousands of people playing every day because that was how they were able to gamble in a legal fashion on a daily yeah. basis. Um, the goalposts have obviously moved a little bit in the last six to 12 months where um, state by state online gaming and betting on your app has opened up, but the DFS landscape internationally is huge, um, especially in the US. I guess the, the new frontier will be India in the coming years. Um, India is regulated or should I say unregulated in sort of different areas. Um, Dream 11, which is the monster of the industry, which is probably five to 10 times the size of DraftKings, um, you know, covers parts of India and you've got, you know, millions of people playing every single day, you know, tens yeah. of millions. So I think that's certainly the frontier that a lot of companies like Daily Fantasy Rankings and a lot of the other big companies around the world are all trying to get their piece of because once that market is regulated, not only for DFS and also sports betting, you've got literally 1.5 billion people that you can attack, which is very exciting for the industry. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to check out more of our content, go to sporttechdaily.com or follow us on social media across Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram.